we're going to move on now to our next topic, which is a show I absolutely will be checking out. Andrew, why don't you give us a little read on um, this show that's called Lord of the Rings. The Power of the Rings. Is it the Power of the Power of the Rings? The Rings of Power, James. There's a huge <laughs> like the difference. The Power of the Rings. <laughs> that sounds like a He-Man spinoff. Ah, let's do it. Oh, boy. This has me excited. All right. This is Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, colon, The Rings of Power. And it brings to screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled Second Age of Middle-Earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and it'll take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and one of the greatest villains that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared reemergence of evil to Middle-earth. From the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains, to the majestic forests of the elf capital of Lindon, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor, to the farthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they are gone. James, this show is, I mean... It, this has been one of the biggest things I've been looking forward to for like the last half decade. Uh -huh. And the fact that it's finally this tangible, I thought we were getting it. Like, I thought this was going to be like a Boba Fett situation where it's like the last day of 2022, like a super Christmas release. And then to find out today from you that it's coming out in September, I'm just giddy as a schoolboy. You don't have to wait long. Still, somewhat long you know we're still nine months or eight months away from from the release of this we don't know much about it it's a prequel obviously mm -hmm. to um the books or the movie we don't know maybe both i'm guessing both. not both though because i don't think anything is coming back but the books obviously the movies are obviously based on those on those uh, books uh a few weeks ago we did get that like non-cg title reveal that they did which was really cool um and this lord of the rings are you knowledgeable in lord of the rings beyond just the the trilogy and the hobbit well not to toot my own horn or okay. anything but if, if you check my tinder profile the first thing i write is ladies i know all the elves that's why i had to delete my tinder profile but all that notwithstanding yeah i i am i have read the the trilogy multiple times. I have read the Silmarillion twice, which is not an easy book to read. Yeah, uh, it's just it's not written really to be read as a book. But the Sil basically, to give you some context, the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit are the Third Age. The Silmarillion is the First Age, and this show is the Second Age. Uh, so that's how the timeline looks. From what I remember reading. Uh, Tolkien's family, his estate, didn't give them permission to do anything set in the first age. The first age was off limits. They're like, you're not touching Silmarillion, you're not touching that stuff, you're not adapting it. The second age was up for grabs. So that's why we have this set in the second age. And the beauty thing is, I mean, they latched on to the perfect moment. The second age is when the rings of power get forged. It's basically that whole prologue where Cape Blanchett is like, nine were made for the humans, all that stuff. And leading up to that big fight where um, Hugo Weaving is like, cast it into the fire. That's the end of the Second Age. When they kill Sauron and they cut his finger off, that ends the Second Age and begins the Third. So this is all, I'm assuming, going to lead up to that war, that battle. Uh, he's going to be making these rings and giving them out. And the fact that these posters, I mean, James, you sent me this link. And I'm like, okay, let me check out these character posters. There's like 90 of these things. It's insane. And some of them are yeah. it's, it's like somebody's well, holding a sword. Some guys are holding acorns. Like I have an acorn. I can, I can hold we'll it show right some, now. we'll show some right now. We have, uh, we have seven of them up because they just kept dropping these things. Yeah. I got yeah. acorns. The acorn one threw me off. It's like, hold my nuts. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with it. But then you got obviously the, the evil sauron guy here. Um, and then I don't know what's going on here. And then and this one, is she pregnant on the right of the screen? <laughs> like, yeah, is that, I don't know is she happening. pregnant with Bilbo Baggins is my question. Like, I feel sorry for that actor because it's like everybody's getting these cool, like 
hold this bow and arrow, hold these symbolic acorns. And then they've told this lady, just hold yourself. Like, oh my, oh, yeah. And I, there's some sword ones. I don't have them. I accidentally put the acorn one on a thousand times. I'm very much obsessed with the acorn picture. Clearly September 2nd though, that's like right before, is that Labor Day or right before Labor Day? That's right at the end of, of summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, and right now, Andrew, I cannot wait for summer. Do not get me started on summer. I cannot wait for it whatsoever. But these posters are these posters for teaser posters. I think they're awesome. I mean, I will go back to this one. This one in the middle here of Sarom, dude, is sweet, right? Like this is this is why I think the honestly, I do think the acorn with the Sauron guy are like the reasons why you're gonna watch this show. You're gonna watch mm -hmm. it for hobbits, acorns, and swords. The Sauron thing has me the most interested because that was, I remember, a big point of contention for like the super hardcore Tolkien nerds when the movies came out. Is that Tolkien never really described what Sauron looked like except in the Silmarillion. And in the Silmarillion, they say he made himself look very beautiful because he was always trying to deceive people and get them to trust him. So he just looked like a super beautiful supermodel of a man. And then in the movies, he's this giant monster in like black armor and stuff. And people were like, no, that's not what Sauron's supposed to be. Uh, so I'm really curious what Sauron's deal is going to be physically in this show. Like, are they going to hire like the stud of all studs to make this guy look trustworthy? Or is he going to look like he has looked in the Peter Jackson trilogies? Because I like the idea of seeing both. Yeah, so do I. I'm um have they announced a cast for this at this point? They have announced a lot of cast, but most of it is kind of like we're not going to tell you who they're playing. Um, oh, okay. I know there's one girl, like the lead that they announced that she's playing young Galadriel. And I don't remember her name, but that's the only one I remember offhand. The others are characters that I'm not familiar with. And I'm, look, I'm completely great. I'm, I'm fine with going into the show knowing very little about who's playing who or the plot itself. Obviously, rings are going to be forged and they're going to be divvied up amongst the inhabitants of middle earth and i think this might be a case of less is more I, and i feel that about a lot of things right less is more let's go into it you don't need to know every aspect of everything these posters are great because they're not showing us anything but they're showing us enough to know it looks like lord of the rings when i look at these pictures yes. it looks like lord of the rings it looks like that that world that we're in and i'm glad that it's not a remake of lord of the rings just the you know the three books that we've already seen Peter Jackson do or The Hobbit. I'm glad that this is outside of that and they can create new characters, some familiar characters, and just have have a good time with what they're doing. I think that's where you're going to have the most. I mean, we talk we talk about Star Wars all the time on Rebel Scum Podcast, and it's like what makes the Mandalorian so much fun is it lives in a time frame that we know, but it's taking characters that we don't know and doing things. And you know, there are places that it can't deviate from. But that's what makes it more creative in a lot of ways. And I think this show is going to benefit from, from having a, a past and present as well. Oh, yeah. Like this is, you know, their equivalent of the High Republic, really. It's an untapped little thing that's back in the past, but not super far back in the past. Uh, so it's they have wiggle room and they have things that they can do because they're dealing with some a part of the sandbox that nobody's played in yet. Uh, my question for you, though, James, is... Considering the subject material and considering the fact that these posters seem to indicate that there are 9,000 characters to follow on this show, <laughs> um, are, is this going to suffer from the inevitable Game of Thrones comparisons? Yeah. Oh, I, you, you compared Boba Fett to Game of Thrones, I think. <laughs> I did, yeah. You uh, did, yeah. We mentioned on the on Rebels Come podcast this week. Mm -hmm. I I read that tweet uh, or that that text message you sent me there. I do. I mean, I think anything. I think The Witcher is getting that. I think anything that takes place in like a medieval time. Not that this is medieval, obviously it's middle, but when it's medieval, let's it's medieval. Um, <laughs> for argument's sake, it is. I, I think anything that is, it's going to get that Game of Thrones like. And, and the reality is 
like Lord of the Rings is Lord of the Rings, so maybe you can argue against it. But the reality is Game of Thrones being the success that it was paved the way for that kind of show to not only be made, but to want to be made. And everyone, Amazon Prime, Netflix, uh, Disney, Paramount Plus, all of them, HBO even, they're all looking for the next Game of Thrones. What is the next Game of Thrones? HBO is doing a Game of Thrones prequel. Halo's coming out on Paramount. Disney Plus has, I mean, Disney has the Marvel and the Boba Fett stuff. I think they're just hoping that one of those will hit the Game of Thrones, like become the Game of Thrones of, of it. And then we have uh, this Lord of the Rings show on Amazon Prime. They're all looking for the next Game of Thrones. That's how that's how television and movies have been for for decades. It's like, what is the next this? And and the mistake, though, Andrew, is you don't look for the next this. You become this, right? Like yes. Game of Thrones wasn't the next the next Magnum P.I. It was Game of Thrones, right? And so you don't have to. But I think this show, because it's it's Lord of the Rings, it gets to escape that and evade those um, those, <laughs> those <laughs> debates a little bit. And Disney does he. Oh, Andrew, what say you on this? I got to hear your opinion on this. We'll break a little bit, but. Game of Thrones, uh, is that like should, how do you how would you word that? Eats Boba Fett? Uh, no, it's Boba Fett is better than Game of Thrones. Yes. Greater than Game yeah. of Thrones. They wants to eat the better one. The alligator wants to eat the better one. <laughs> that's all I remember. Yeah, the alligator yeah, wants what... to eat the better. <laughs> and then she said, "Sorry, not sorry." Uh, I, I've only seen season one of Game of Thrones, so I agree wholeheartedly. On <laughs> well, I've only seen season one of Book of Boba Fett, so Hello. I don't know if I can talk. But uh, no, Disney, I i mean, I'm not going to uh, yuck your yum at all. I think Book of Boba Fett is a fantastic show. And from what it looks like, we are only getting one season of it. So it's a lot easier to judge its merits because it has less opportunities to screw up. Uh, Game of Thrones had plenty of those opportunities, and I feel like I, I'm one, I'm in the camp of the first seven seasons were magnificent. Uh, I know a lot of people hated season seven, but I'm like, no, season seven's great. It's just in the last season where I was like, what are you people doing? Did you forget how to write? Um, so that's I, funny because sorry, sorry, Aaron yeah. Aaron watched it all. She got uh, Lyme disease, and she watched it all while she was like bed bedridden. Mm -hmm. and she got to she got to season eight as it was happening and she had the same kind of opinion like she was loving the show she had no gripes with even like anything and then all of a sudden she goes i don't know what's happening here like something and she was but she was watching it like back to back to back to back to back like there was yes. no breaks like you guys all had breaks right so it was, yeah. it was interesting to see everyone having that same kind of opinion of the last season of the show yeah that last season was weird um but I feel, and Disney, I don't know if this is how you feel, but I feel like the way my brain works is I automatically give more points to the Book of Boba Fett just because, even though I love both these shows, just because Game of Thrones is trying to adapt a thing that was already made, whereas Book of Boba Fett is telling a story that has never been told before and we have no idea how it's going to play out. Uh, that made the last few seasons of Game of Thrones more exciting for me because I'm like, I don't know where the story is going to go. And then we saw where it went, and it's like, take me back to season five, please. Uh, so wait, do you think that will affect you on Rings of Power at all? Um, not, No, because Rings of Power is not based on really any story. All that they're using, from what I can tell, of Tolkien's Legendarium is Sauron made these rings. He made it rain and he gave rings to people and then it led to people trying to overthrow him because he had the big daddy of all the rings. But other than that, this is completely new territory. So I find that really, really cool, but I'm worried that the majority of fans, uh, or at least not the majority, but I'm worried that toxic fandom, let me put it that way. I'm worried toxic online fandom will not be able to let themselves enjoy this show because they'll be too busy getting on a soapbox and saying, this isn't what Tolkien would have wanted. Uh, just because we know that that's how toxic fandom works. So I feel I just have to prepare myself for that because that response is going to happen. It's 2022 that people are going to do that on Twitter, but I'm just going to sit and ride this Hobbit fueled wave of like 
stories that I don't know and little references to things that I do know and just getting excited for that because that's what I love about this. I think the the one thing though that it has going for it, like you said though, is this is that second age thing, right? Yeah. Where it's kind of like it hasn't been touched. So you can kind of get away with doing a lot. Um, but again, judging from these posters, it looks like they're being somewhat respectful to Lord of the Rings. It looks like Lord of the Rings. They're like dirty hands. The hands aren't clean. They're dirty. The Nobody in like- Lord of the Rings has clean fingers. Not one soul. Yeah, but Bezos might have been like, make sure someone has clean hands. I, I don't know what these uh, what these berries are here. Rez says that makes sense, Andrew. I don't know who this Rez guy is. Nobody should be Hi, Rez. Andrew, obviously. <laughs> this is the complete uh, 180 from what he said about you yesterday on the live show on Rebel Scum. What? Uh, what do you guys think of these posters uh, in the chat? Um, I think there's, like I said, I think this week, I think this show is a lot to look forward to. It looks like they're spending a lot of money. Amazon Prime is really kind of like building up their library tenfold now. I get, you know, this is on there, this is on there. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of programming is um, coming on. And Mr. Red says that Pippin had clean hands. <laughs> That's because he was always eating and licking his fingers, like he never had a chance bre- to get them dirty. Gotta love second breakfast. Uh, yeah. It, I don't know what more to say about this show. The synopsis sounds great. Um, the posters look like, you know, sure. Uh, and I have Prime Video, so I can't see why I'm not going to watch yeah. this show. I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, and and I, to your point, though, September 2nd, end of summer, that's not really when I really enjoy watching television. I am a, a December. Lord of the Rings and December really go together well. Yes, like, they Star do. kind of filled that void. I'm going to put solo there instead. And you had that, had that Christmas without it. You felt a little bit empty. So that's the only thing that I'm like, yeah, a little, I'm not bummed. I mean, if I wanted to, I could wait until December. <laughs> yeah. <watch> it. <laughs> it's, it's not going anywhere, but that's the only thing I would say in that respect is, you know, whatever. Going to watch it at the end of summer, the tail end of summer. I, I hope it releases weekly. I don't, yeah. uh, time has had a few shows. I don't, I haven't watched any prime shows so i'm not sure how they do it but i heard andrew and actually why don't you uh, mention this before we go into our next topic is i i read um an article today that's saying that netflix their their method of releasing everything at once is not uh doing them any favors lately their numbers are dropping whereas the whereas the streaming services that are going weekly are more successful. So where, where are you on? Do you like everything all at once? Or are you a week to week? I like the week to week thing because uh, last year I made the mistake. I was so excited, excited. Wow. Here's <laughs> English. I was so excited for Cobra Kai season three last year that I watched it all in one sitting. And that is not healthy or smart uh, because now that season is all blurred together. And uh, yeah, Disney, you're right. I, I don't know what I was thinking to say that there were toxic fans online. Maybe, I, yeah, ignore that. That wasn't true. Fake news. Uh, so I much prefer, especially when it shows that I'm really loving, I prefer having to pace myself. Though some shows I feel like, like I've gotten to the point where when a Netflix show comes out that I'm excited for, I can watch like three at a time and then wait another day and pace myself. But for things like these that I'm really you know, chopping at the bit for it. things like Mandalorian, things like Lord of the Rings. I'm glad that I get the weight because I want to pace myself. And I'll just conclude by saying the thing that makes me the most excited about this show, James, about the Rings of Power, and that I think a lot of Tolkien fans might feel the same way, is that that little snippet from what I read where they said it'll explore, you know, this place and that place and all the edges of the map. Uh, yeah, the farthest reaches of the map oh, I can't tell you how excited that makes me feel because anybody who read those books and looked at those maps that Christopher Tolkien drew always thought the same thing that I did, which is like, look at this place that that, the story never goes here and it's just this empty space, but there's something there called like the Blue Hills of Duel. And it's like, what's that? What's over there? What's this tower on the sea that we never see or mention at all? Like what's going on in that tower? So the idea that we're going to get some answers to those questions, hmm, yes, please. 
And uh, Disney does these also on week to week because it gives the opportunity to come to YouTube and listen to your thoughts and Thursday. Well, thank you very much. Bingo, Disney, uh, Disney. Exactly. Yeah, look, that is one thing. Uh, I'm a week to week guy. You know, I'm not a binger, but I can't. So I can't really. I don't like my opinion kind of sucks on this because I'm not a binger naturally. So I'm always going to say week to week. Um, but I do like, I, I hate like when Stranger Things comes out because like I talked to Brock about it and he's like, ah, I watched it. And I'm like, well, I saw the first episode, so we can't talk about it yet. Cause he, yeah. you know, you, you forget which happens in which episode when you watch them all at once. Right. Cause there's yes. no more intro. There's nothing. It's just, it's just all blurs. And it's one giant movie, which is also fine. So I can't talk, we can't talk about it. So it's done. But but week week to week I love. However, a show like the Book of Boba Fett, um, people, I, I wanted to. I talked to Brock a little bit about this. It's like, would this show like his Peacemaker dropped three episodes at once? Bam, 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 three episodes. Are you in? That's how you hook it. I, I'm wondering if a show like Book of Boba Fett would have benefited from maybe the first few episodes dropping on the same day. Uh, One Division did the first two mm-hmm. because they were similar. Hawkeye did two. Um, and the Hawkeye 2, I, I was a fine with it being two, actually, but I didn't feel like those two really needed to drop on the same day. Like, WandaVision was, it felt a little bit more. And Peacemaker kind of made sense why they dropped those three, because the thir- end of the third episode was when you're like, oh, the plot. Like, that's when you're like, butterflies, right? Spoilers. Yeah. Not really, but. So, I don't know. Do you think, before we move on, do you think Book of Boba Fett could have benefited from maybe three or four episodes dropping at on the same day? Or are you just like, nope, week to week is week to week? I, don't, I think week to week in the case of Boba Fett is better just because that show right now is two different shows. It's like the first half was Godfather 2 with Boba Fett. And now it's this totally different thing that we're seeing. It's Mandalorian 2.5. So I think the more pacing you have between that, the less jarring that is, even though it is still a very jarring experience. Um, but what I like about the idea of these particular shows, the Marvel and the Star Wars shows, one reason why I love that they're paced out this way is because now you can, you have a reason to rewatch uh, because you're watching it this way, episodically with everybody else week by week. And then let's say in a year, I want to do an MCU marathon and watch everything in order again. When I get to Hawkeye, I can watch it all now as one six hour movie. Whereas I, I, if I had already had that experience when it came out, it wouldn't, feel as you know the novelty would be gone yeah and i did watch mando season one we talked about whether or not i would as like a four-hour movie and i said never and i did um, mm-hmm. and it was a great it was a great experience